Okay, um, thanks for everyone for joining. Um, this is a webinar on reverse engineering. Uh, basically, we're going to be going through the software side of reverse engineering. Now, I have an extensive amount of experience actually in doing reverse engineering. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but uh, I've reversed uh, small tools, um, organic statues. I've reversed um, uh, airports. Uh, an air one airport, I've reversed planes. I've reversed uh, many different types of structures, both large and small. And I can understand a lot of the challenges actually that come with reverse engineering. I've also used a lot of different software out there, um, including SpaceClaim. And I can say on a personal level, SpaceClaim is probably one of the best softwares I've ever used for doing reverse engineering. We're going to be going through the um, specifically only reverse engineering aspects of SpaceClaim. SpaceClaim can do a lot of other different things, but uh, specifically this webinar is um, going through the reverse engineering side of SpaceClaim and explaining some of the challenges that are associated with reverse engineering. Now, I know we have a diverse audience here, so um, some of you may or may not be familiar with doing reverse engineering, so I'm going to go through the basics and then we'll get into more some advanced uh, stuff later. If uh, you want to ask more advanced questions, um, please feel free to add them into the chat and we'll make sure to address them near the end. So let's talk about what we're talking about when we're saying reverse engineering. So first of all, reverse engineering essentially is taking a physical part or product and actually recreating it in a digital manner. Um, traditionally, the reverse engineering aspect was really going through and trying to figure out how something was designed or created. But now when we're talking about specifically um, 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 the uh, reverse engineering, we're really just talking about the digital um, creation of that physical product. So um, the process, um, uh, first of all, um, in the software side is the mesh cleanup. So the first thing you'll see is on the right there, I have a bunch of different scanners. These are actually handheld scanners, but there's many different forms of scan available out there. For some of uh, you that are maybe customers online, um, I know we've done and helped reverse engineering for doing CAT scans, um, x-rays. Um, there's also wand scanners. There are survey scanners for doing large um, area spaces. Um, the handheld scanners are either photogrammetry scanners or laser scanners. There's many different forms of scan out there. But typically the format that you receive when you do a scan is essentially a mesh. And what we're talking about mesh, we're talking about a triangulation um, uh, geometry shape, which basically is a bunch of little triangles that are connected together and they create um, the shape uh, of the model. The problem with using this triangular mesh cleanup or, or mesh uh, type file format is it's very difficult to edit. Um, in SpaceClean you can edit mesh files, but ideally what we're trying to do is recreate that mesh geometry back into a mathematical CAD format that is much more easily manipulated and transferable to other people. Uh, so once we do the scan, and like I said, the, some of the scanners, uh, they're, they're on the right. Um, there's many handheld scanners that are really great out there. Um, the costs of the scanners are coming down quite a bit, which is why we're selling a lot of space claim for reverse is essentially this mesh file format. Now, the next step really is the mesh alignment or orientation. So a lot of the times when you're meshing, you're going to bring in a prismatic shape uh, or maybe an organic shape such as a statue or whatnot and you'll have some spaces of uh, some places in the part that you really want to be lined up to the wor world coordinate system the reason why that is is because oftentimes when you're scanning this part will not necessarily match the full intent of the design so for example you may have a whole whole that it's supposed to be one inch, but when you scan it, it might be 0 0.095, 0 0.905, or something like that. Um, uh, you know, you might have different um, 
faces on the model that maybe one needs to be lined up at the base of the of, of the the uh, of the world coordinate system. So you want to line up these datums and uh, create a uh, mesh alignment with that model. And so space planes very good with doing orientation. After you do that, you want to do a datum creation. So the datum creation would be putting in uh, reference planes, um, reference um, cylinders, or geometry to help you create the G the uh, recreate the part. Uh, once that model is set up, and honestly, a lot of times where we see troubleshooting issues with um, uh, reverse engineering is usually the, the mesh alignment and datum creation. Uh, then you're ready to do geometry creation. The nice part about um, the space claim software has automated geometry creation capability and also very powerful manual creation ge geometry um, capability in the modeler to be able to recreate that part. Um, once you've created the part, a lot of people what they forget to do at the end of the um, at the end of the uh, reverse engineering is do a deviation analysis. So making sure that the model that you've created is actually m closely matched to the mesh part. For example, sometimes when you're doing reverse engineering and the model is complex, you might miss a feature. Maybe you missed a hole. Maybe you missed a protrusion. And you want to make sure that you've captured all of the detail in the model um, that was required for the reverse. So a deviation analysis is usually a good idea. So those are typically the process steps. So like I said, first of all, which is not in there, you're going to scan and transfer the mesh. You're going to do mesh cleanup, mesh alignment, data creation, geometry creation, deviation analysis. The big challenges um, in reverse engineering, like I said, one, mesh alignment is usually a problem. Another one is sometimes uh, if you have someone scanning a model and they're not experienced in doing scans, because doing a proper scan is actually actually does take some skill in complex parts, the mesh can come, sometimes come in quite messy and um, really uh, poorly scanned. So um, sometimes that can happen. Again, we have really great mesh cleanup capability. Uh, but it's always good to do a good scan. So always make sure you know who the scanner is or the person scanning um, and make sure that you're skilled uh, at doing the scan of the part. Um, sometimes the geometry creation is too slow. Uh, there are ways to automate this or speed this up, but um, reverse engineering is a large skill set. It's not something that you're going to learn in a couple hours. Um, learning the software side of reverse engineering is definitely very simple in space cleaning, but um, actually building your um, uh, capability uh, as, as a skill um, is definitely something you need to learn over time. And then the last thing is um, sometimes there might be too much deviation in the model. So maybe you'll do a scan and you, maybe you might have surfaced the model or created some geometry faces and maybe the tolerance between the model and the mesh is too large. So some of the space claim really advantages compared to other packages out there that I really enjoy is one, reverse engineering in space claim is easy to use. A lot of times in reverse engineering, some of the software out there really requires a dedicated operator. And um, if you don't have a dedicated operator, you're not going to be able to do good reverse engineering. With space claim, you do not need a dedicated operator. The reverse engineering capability of space claim is quite simple. So um, you can actually get hop on and off the software without really worrying too much about losing your um, skill set. Um, the other thing I like about space claim, which they recently put in like a couple of years ago, is they put in organics. So you can actually do organic and prismatic shapes. You'll notice there at the bottom, I have both on the left a prismatic model um, and also on the right because the medical industry is um, becoming a large area of reverse engineering is being able to do organic shapes. Also in medical, um, art, um, uh, media, different types of um, uh, industries out there really require the organics. And the last thing is, um, Software is very cost effective. Um, space claim, when you buy it out of the box, it's, and there's no additional add-ons, the reverse engineering comes with the basic package of space claim. So it's a really, really nice um, offering that space claim gives. So that being said, I'll finish up. I'll let 
Ali now take over, and you, Ali is actually going to get into the uh, um, specifics and weeds of the software and show you the process of how to actually um, do reverse engineering on a couple different parts. Thank you, Ben, for that great presentation. I welcome you all for this webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure to present you the capabilities of space claim in the field of reverse engineering. So I'll just go ahead and share my screen. And let me know Hi, Ali. when you see my screen. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, we can see. Okay, wonderful. So this is the basic uh, user interface of space claim. Let's say you have scanned something through your 3D uh, uh, scanner, right? But the thing is, as you import it into a 3D CAD software, the orientation wouldn't be right. So if I say just uh, uh, go uh, perpendicular to Z axis, I can see that this scanner isn't uh, in a right direction, right? From all the axis, it has been uh, slightly deviated. So what to do in this case? Space claim can orient the mesh quite easily. So how to do that? So I'll just, so orienting the mesh is quite a difficult uh, task, right? So within space claim, we have certain features which can be used in this case. This is a co complex part. This is a say a fax printer. So orienting this in a traditional software might be a bit difficult, right? So over here, there's a feature called orient facets. So just go into the orient facets tab. And, and now it will show me to just select a plane or a cylindrical uh, reference okay so if i just hover over any uh, reference it will show on this alignment of z axis uh, toward the cylindrical axis it will only align it will not orient itself okay so now it the z axis has been aligned towards uh, the center axis of that very cylinder now i can just select the y axis orientation so again i can just go ahead and select the cylindrical axis or I can select a plane. So let's select the bottom plane. One is select to do. Now if I just move, uh, working is that the printer should be uh, just in the of that very. Uh, coordinate system. So what I can do, uh, I can just click on the facets and press M from the keyboard and just click up to button and it will move the complete faceted to move the facet body around with a simple tool called orient facets and move. If you use a traditional software, it will be quite difficult to manage the files which are having facets, right? Now let's say you have a bit more complex part like this. This have been scanned. So selecting and editing a faceted body is quite difficult as I was stating, right? But within space claim, there are certain features through which we can alter the faceted body quite easily. For example, if I just double click over here, I can select all the tangent faces. But you might see uh, that there are some faces or some triangular facet that aren't being selected. So for that, there is a slider to manage the tolerance. So this slider, with this slider, I can just increase the tolerance and select the different faceted uh, areas. Now, if say I want to alter the, you know, the thickness of this valley body, so I can just go to the pull tool in here, and I can just pull it to change the dimensions. So it's quite easy to alter a clean faceted uh, geometry within space claim. If it isn't clean, we have ways to clean the body. Please let me know if in my screen got struck or uh, uh, if I'm moving a bit faster, okay? So let's say this is a hole. So selecting the hole might be quite tedious in other software. So over here, if I just double click, I can again move the slider to select all the facet uh, over this uh, cylindrical area. Now again, I can just use the pull tool to change the dimensions. Even if say, I want to move this uh, hole at a different position, there's a move tool to our remedy. So I can just move it all around. 
wherever I want. Okay. The other thing say I want to move a certain feature apart from whole. So this feature I want to move, right? So I can just box select this one and just go to move. Before that, I want to give the permission to select all the faceted body. So for example, over here, the uh, facets which weren't visible aren't getting selected. So these facets aren't selected. So what I can do, I can just go in here and select through. What it will do, it will give the command that even those facets which are not visible should get selected if they are within the box. So now if I select the uh, feature and go to move, now I can change it and move it all around. So changing and altering the dimensions within space claim is quite easy even if they are facets, right? So let's say uh, we want to uh, remove or take out a certain kind of sketch from this uh, very solid. Say this is a sketch which would be quite difficult to generate because this is a, a 3D sketch, right? So within space claim, I can just uh, press Control C from my keyboard and Control V and hide this faceted body and then I can extract this uh, 3D curve and use it for different purposes if I need to. Let's unhide the faceted body. The other uh, thing that might be taken place that we have captured a complete uh, body, right? But what we need is separate component. So doing separate component can be quite time consuming in here. But uh, within space claim, there is a simple tool called separate all. If I just click on separate all, what it will do uh, within the structure tree, if you note, there is just one faceted body, right? If I just click on separate all, what it will do, it will separate all the different components from this body. So if I just change the colors of these bodies. So now these bodies are get got subtracted, separated. Now say if say you want to 3D print or I want to 3D print a single component to see how it is. So I can do so quite easily. So these are the different components that space claim has separated. So if we, we might have done a traditional way or separated different component in a manual way, it will be a quite time consuming task. Okay, let's move on to a part which is not that much clean but say well, we want to reverse engineer it. So this is a small part. Say I want to reverse engineer it. So what I'll do, I'll just go into the sketch mode first and try to see what kind of uh, uh, different geometries that we have, different sketches that we have. So if I just move this a bit inside, I can see the different, just a second. If I just, Ash, there are people waiting in the lobby. Will you please accept them? Okay. So this is a sketch mode, okay? So uh, as I can see over here, there are certain sketches that Space Claim have already detected, right? So there are two ways. From here, I can just extract these sketches or I can create my own. So say I want to extract these sketches. So what I can do, I can select these sketches select all these sketches which I have in here. Go to sketch and click on project to sketch. Now what it will do, it will just copy these sketches and make them into a sketch format. Now uh, these sketches might not be the true representation because the curvature wouldn't be generated as it would be. So we have a repair tool in here. So repair tool can fit curves. So if there are some kind of tangency that is missing or some kind of dimension that are missing, that fit curves will take care of all of this. So let me click in here and we can just select what kind of uh, fitting we want. We want to uh, use the lines, we want to use the arcs, splines or tangency. So let's say I want to correct the tangency and now if I click the check mark, the sketch will be created. Now if I just move out of the tool and there will be a surface that will be generated. Just a second. Okay, this sketch has been generated. I can just select complete of a sketch and fill it to create a surface, right? Once I have the surface, I can pull this thing around and pulling this, I need not to, uh, you know, know the dimensions. 
So we have something called up to, right? So just click on up to and select any of the facet. It will just extrude that part towards uh, that very edge or something. Similarly, if I just click in here and again, just go to up to and click here, it will extend it uh, towards this edge. So it's quite easy because the thing is space claim automatically detects uh, if you are in a cross section mode, what kind of sketch there is. Now for creating these holes, that's quite simple. Just going into the sketch mode and just moving the sketch plane a bit downwards and just uh, orienting it properly. Now I can just uh, simply create three point circles all around here. Similarly, if I can just uh, or copy as well, or I can just create them manually. Once I am done with it, I can move, move out of that sketch and use this surface to just uh, remove the material throughout the body. Okay. So we have created a solid body out, out of that uh, faceted body. As you might have seen that there are certain faces which have been present that can be removed using the remove facets tool. The other way that I was telling that we can create the geometry is to create a manual uh, manual sketch. The manual sketch would be also quite simple. That is just going to do the sketch and just going a bit deep so that we can capture the detail of the sketch. Once I have it, I can just create a rectangular pattern, just uh, creating a you know, I need not to know the dimensions as of now because everything can be done at the later stage. So I can just create one in here, one in here, and one in here. Once I have it, I can just remove the ones that aren't required. Once I remove all of these, I can just exit the sketch. Again, there will be a surface created. So if I just select this surface, just up to tool will be used over here as well. So just using the up to in all the senses so that I need not to know the exact dimensions or anything like that. I can just use up to over here. Similarly, if say I have uh, a dimensions that has been not accurate in this part, I can just select, go to up to and select this edge. Similarly, I can go all around and create this kind of feature. If say there are rounds, over here we have certain kind of rounds that need to be presented. So first I'll just move this one towards the top surface. These two are corrected, so I just want to select just one, up to. Select this one, and if say I want to uh, put a radii over here, fill a fillet, so I can just, again for the fillet as well, we can use up to. So if I just click on up to, and click on any facet, the uh, rounds will be created. Similarly in here, I can just select the edge. It's quite simple, right? The edge isn't visible but through pressing control and scroll from the keyboard, I am able to select the edge. Once I have selected the edge, I can again go to up to and just select any of the facets up to which I want to create that uh, very facet. So there are two ways. I can either extract the uh, sketch automatically, although it will create some kind of uh, difference because the thing is, there might not be an accurate representation. So the other way is just to create yourself. Now comes a part, say, you have a very much organic shape, like this one, right? So how would you create a, a solid or say a die for this? So this is complete faceted body. It will be quite difficult to just uh, play around with this. But for this too, we have a certain kind of tool which is quite handy. If I just go into the tools, there's something called skin surface. So if I just click on skin surface, I can just select the areas which I want to uh, uh, extract. Now there will be this rectangular part that have been generated, right? So this rectangular part that have been generated will capture the detail 
of this faceted geometry. And these are the control points which can be changed to uh, increase or decrease the orientation of uh, of the facets. So let's say if I I have selected these, and uh, the one way was to just grab select. The other way is just to put up a point and just uh, define the control points. Once I have the control points, I can just change them uh, at my will uh, later stage. So let us just quickly draw some control points and some edges. Once I have it, I'll just close it in here. So it will show me a preview how this uh, will look. Right. So this is the scan that it will look. Say I want to have a full preview. I can just click in here. It will show me how it is capturing the detail. So the finer these blocks are, the more detail that it will be able to capture. So now if I just click on the check mark, it will try to go around and create a patch surface over here. So the patch surface has been created. So if I just hide the faceted body, now this surface has been created. Now the information from this uh, facet have been uh, copied to this uh, surface. Now as this is the surface, we can use the ordinary tools such as pull and move, right? So if say I just want to create a solid out of it, say for die purpose. So what I can do is I can just go into the pull, select the bottom of surface and uh, select the direction which I want to uh, pull this say in the Z direction and just pull it around. So now this thing uh, manufacturing it or something can, could be used as a die as well. Okay. Now let's move to a, a bit more so you can see this is a geometry which might be quite difficult to even look at, right? So there are multiple uh, places from where the facets aren't present. So if you are manually uh, updating it or manually creating facets all around the body, it will take quite a long. So over here, we have a feature that is called repair. So if I just go into a facets and call, go to auto fix, what it will do, it will go around and try to fix the geometry uh, itself. So it will try to fix the geometry and within few seconds or so, I have a geometry which is quite uh, repaired than the one that we had before. So the part that was before was having multiple holes in here. Now those holes have been fulfilled and uh, now new facets have been created in here. But there might be some positions where it would not look good. For example, at this very hole, the facets are quite uh, uh, edgy, I guess. So over here, what we can do is we can create certain kind of geometries through which we can just uh, resolve this issue. So within space claim, we can combine the solid bodies and faceted bodies and use different kind of tool. What I mean is that if say, I just uh, select some of the facets from here, some of the facets from here and some of the facets from in here. So let's select first facets, some facets from here and some facets from here. So now if I just click on this cylinder, I'm able to put the cylinder in here. I'm able to put a cylinder in here, right? So if I have the cylinder, I can just pull it Now, this cylinder, this cylinder can be used to subtract material from this uh, very body. So if I just go into the facet again, there is something called subtract. So I can just subtract this. And now I can have a clean uh, hole. Now, as this hole is clean, we can again just select these different facets from here and go to pull to manage the radii of this hole. So this hole can be changed now. Now this hole is quite smooth in comparison to the hole that we had previously. Now 
let's say uh, look at the other thing that we have okay so over here we have a certain kind of a bump right so certain kind of a bump that isn't desirable for our case so what i can do is i can just go to a different selection because we had a box selection it wouldn't work in this case so there is something called paint selection so i can just brush around and select these okay I like this but the thing is through options is available like disable that okay now I just select this and I can delete these all once I've deleted there are multiple ways to create a, a face in here uh, the first way that we'll go through and that's quite easy is to just go into the missing faces it will automatically detect what kind of face that we have selected so it have found one area and there are two options to fill those holes. Either we want to fill a patch or we want to fill as a cap. So say I want to fill as a patch. I'll click the check mark. Now the edges have been reduced quite significantly. Let's say I further want to smooth this thing. So something is called smooth. So you can just click on smooth and select the facets which I want to smoothen off. Now with smoothening, we have three things that can be done one is that we can flatten the peaks first thing second thing is we can add the facets right so let's say flatten the peaks let's click the check mark so what it will do it will try to flatten the peaks that are in here so that it's not that much itchy tag now if say i want to add the facets i can click and add facets and click the check mark now it will increase the uh, facet density over this area to make it a bit smoother okay now let's say we have some kind of an organic shape, more organic shape like a bone. So if you have a certain kind of a bone, it would be you know quite difficult to convert it into a 3D solid or something. So with space claim again, uh, we can just go into the tools and go to the auto skin, uh, skin surface tool. With skin surface like we did in the initial case, uh, we can just uh, grab down some of the control points select the control points and close this go on to the other edge put in the some control points and close this off as well now it will show a preview preview of a mesh that is it will be aligning towards that bone now the samples that we have currently is called 50 if we increase the sample size, uh, the size of the model will increase, but the thing is the accuracy of model will also increase. So we just click on the check mark. So the uh, skin have been generated in here. Now it's saying that uh, some of the approximation uh, features have been used. The reason being the sample size is less. So if I increase the sample size, the time it will take to generate this surface will also be more. So for showing in this presentation, uh, I have chosen a bit smaller sample size. Again, these features uh, of the bone will be quite hard to capture. Again, if I just create a certain kind of a surface around it, create control points and close this. And at the top also, I create a similar thing. I can close this off and again the mesh will be inserted in here. Once I've created this mesh, I can click the check mark and the uh, surface will be inserted. Now once the surface has been inserted, I can just uh, put a capping in here. So capping is quite easy, just uh, click the edge and click the very top. So once I click the very top and click the check mark, it will try to insert a cap in here, right? So cap have been inserted in here. Similar way, I can uh, create in here the same thing that I've done over there. I can just create it all around. But the other way is to just auto skin all these things, right? This was the manual way that we want more uh, uh, precise control over the model. If say I want to auto skin it and create the uh, solid, uh, automatically 
I can just select in here, click the check mark. The software will automatically try to auto scan it. But in this case, because we have certain kind of peaks in here, uh, these kind of peaks or over here also I have certain kind of peaks. These peaks need to be removed. So for that, I can just again go back to the repair. Press it tab. Click on the smooth and just select these peaks and just flatten these peaks all around. Let's see over here what else we can do. Again, we can smoothen the peaks or add the facets at different positions. Over here, we have certain kind of uh, peaks or something that was uh, not letting us to uh, create auto skin. Okay. Now let's say uh, we have a uh, we have a lag or something, okay, for which uh, we want to just create a solid. Because creating a solid, if we have a solid, we can manipulate it. We can change the dimensions, and you know, say we want to make a, a mold out of it. We cannot do with a faceted geometry. So over here as well, uh, space claim comes quite handy. So if I just click on this valley top facet, I can insert a plane in here. By inserting the plane, uh, I can just uh, create different kind of faceted mesh. What I mean is if I just move this uh, plane in here and again create a copy of a plane in here. I make a copy in here as well. And just rotate this thing around a bit create more detail of this very lag okay let us move it a bit downwards okay now we can capture the complete detail of the lag so once we have this lag i can just again just go to the tool uh, go to skin surface select this plane it will try to capture the detail of the curve. Again, I just click on the other other plane. We'll again, try to mesh all around. Again, the mesh sample size will be selected uh, from the one that we have given in the options. I can just again select this one and this one. Now, the mesh have been put in place in all around the uh, leg. And I can click the check mark to create the mesh. And now the solid have been, the surface have been generated. Now the other thing is to just put on the capping, right? The capping part, uh, I can just select the uh, edge and select the tip point and it will try to cap this around. Now if I just click the check mark, It will put it all around this very leg. Now let's hide the faceted body in all the planes. Okay. So now we have this leg. I can just uh, fill the top part to make it complete solid. Okay. Now if say I want to make a mold out of it, so I can just go into prepare, go to enclosure, and just give the dimension say from top I want one mm. Okay. So click the check mark. And hide this solid so I've created a mold out of it now say uh, for different kind of like say we are making a certain kind of uh, 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 hospitalization or some someone who has lost a leg we are creating a lot lag depending upon his certain uh, dimensions of his leg we can use a 3d scanner to scan the leg then we can put that 3D image within space claim and we can create a mold using the reverse engineering technique that we have within space claim. Yeah. That's all from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, we'll just uh, I'll just take over here. We'll just open up the floor and just see if there's anybody that has any questions within the um, audience. Uh, so we'll just wait uh, 30 seconds or to one minute here. Is there anybody here in the audience that has a question? Want to either type it in the chat 
or you're welcome to unmute yourself and um, ask it verbally. Going once, going twice. Okay, thanks very much for everyone for attending. I uh, really appreciate uh, your attendance. Um, Ash uh, will be sending out a link to the YouTube um, of this video where you can either review it again or you're willing, you're welcome to share it with other people. Uh, also, um, uh, if any of you have any topics that you would like um, uh, discussed at a future webinar event, because um, we're always looking for topic um, areas to discuss uh, for webinar events, feel free to email um, Ash um, and let her know uh, which uh, topics you'd like to see uh, us discuss. And um, uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the future. So thanks very much for attending, and um, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining, everyone.